men on the march, but not against the enemy. These men are prisoners of war, American soldiers who have been captured by the enemy, now being marched back to a prison camp. Not a pretty picture, not a pleasant subject to think about, but still our men do get captured through no fault of their own, in spite of all they can do to prevent it. And when they are captured, they end up in places like this, a prison camp, deep within enemy territory. Miles from nowhere, feeling lonely, depressed and useless. Useless to themselves and to anyone else. But even when a man is captured, he needn't always end up here. And once he is here, he needn't always stay. Take Sergeant James J. Anderson, for instance. He's had opportunities to escape, some of them very good ones. But here he is. Why? Part of the reason is psychological. When a man is captured, he is usually in a state of shock. His fortunes have changed so rapidly that his mind cannot make the adjustment. One minute he was fighting the enemy, the next he is a prisoner. He is confused, bewildered, dejected, as Sergeant Anderson was. An unfortunate state of mind, because while a man is still here, close to the front lines, his chances for escape are better than they will ever be again. No matter how tired he may be, he is usually still in good physical condition. He is nearer to his own lines than he will be for a long time to come. He is not very well guarded. His guards were not trained to handle prisoners. They were trained for combat. Besides, there are not very many of them. In a frontline outfit, there is need for every man. Only a minimum number of soldiers can be spared to escort prisoners to the rear. Often, some of these guards are lightly wounded men who are being sent back to the rear area for treatment. If the odds are ever in favor of the prisoner, it is here, in the midst of frontline area confusion, where everyone, including the guards, is forced to consider his own safety first. This is it, a tailor-made chance for escape. The man who is on his toes is ready to grab the first opportunity. The sooner the better. There may not be another as good for a long time. There are always chances for the prisoner who has resolved to escape and is looking for the right moment. The difficulty is that only a few men are psychologically prepared to take advantage of these opportunities when they present themselves. Only a very few. Unfortunately, Sergeant Anderson was not one of them. Looking back, I can remember other opportunities which I might have seized as well as the next man. There was that sergeant from C Company who was next to me on the march. He was a smart cookie. Stretch out the column. Stretch it out. Stretch out. He really had it figured. As we approached a curve in the road, he got us to stretch out the column because he knew this would momentarily put him out of sight of the rear guards as we went around the curve. When the time came, he knew what to do. He was never missed. Then later in the day, there was that tough little private. He was another soldier who kept his eyes open and his mind working. He'd noticed that when trucks passed the column, they threw up a heavy cloud of dust. 
To most of the men, the dust was just another annoyance, choking up your lungs and getting in your eyes. To this soldier, it meant something else. Wish me luck. Yeah, he took a chance. So did the others who got away. Sure, escape can be risky, but I found out that it's also risky to spend time in an enemy prison camp. You risk not only your body, but your mind. Escape becomes more and more important. I keep remembering the night we spent at the division enclosure. That was one of the best chances I ever had. We were still quite close to the front, and there wasn't much of a moon. The enclosure was just a field with some barbed wire around it. And there were only a couple of guards patrolling the outside. If only I'd been on my toes, I could have gotten away, just as easily as those two soldiers from Baker Company. They carefully timed the movements of the nearest guard and knew exactly how long it took him to walk his post. At the right moment, they took off. They were gone before the guard returned. Did they get back? Probably. We were still only a few miles from our own lines. But Sergeant Anderson was still there the next morning when the trucks came for them. So were two other men from his unit, Smitty and Tex. <laughs> Transportation. Yeah, looks like we ride. That's right. Transportation, but it only meant that they would now be moving much faster to the rear. Every man who is a prisoner has thoughts of escape. Getting on the trucks, they began to realize that from here on, escape would be much tougher. And they were right about that. From now on, they would be in the hands of military police, who were specially trained for guarding prisoners. Escape would be tougher, yes, but never impossible. Remember that the further a prisoner is moved from the combat zone, the more difficult it will be to work back to his own lines. He must keep his eyes and ears open and stay alert. He must not give up hope, because there is always the chance that something will turn up at the most unexpected moment. That something may happen which will provide the opportunity. Hey, look! Airplane! They're ours. That's what's worrying me. How come? We're riding in enemy trucks in enemy territory. Oh, yeah. I only hope they don't see us. They do! Hey, airplanes! Airplanes! <laughs> I'm going with him. At ease. Huh? Who tag? Who tag? Most men have the initiative to escape. Nobody likes being a prisoner. It takes courage, of course, quick thinking and a little luck. But mostly it takes the will to escape. That's what that corporal in the boxcar had. This train ride looked like the last lap. The men sensed that the next stop would be their permanent home, a prison camp. And they could feel the miles piling up behind them. 
putting more and more distance between them and their own lines. Most of them were feeling pretty gloomy. But one man was thinking of other things, more constructive things. Do you suppose we can get these guys to punch around that wire fence and sort of kibitz over the card game? They want to understand that game, that's some Do foreign... they have to understand it to watch it? I don't get it. Well, if you can manage to get them over there by that partition and sort of keep them in between those guards and myself, I... Okay. Say, uh, let's watch the card game. I'm betting on the guy on the left. Well, I can't understand that game. Sure you can. It's poker. Give it. Guess it makes them nervous. They can't stand a little kibitzy. even chose the correct side of the car so he wouldn't land in front of an approaching train and to also make it more difficult for the guard to fire at him. Initiative and determination, that's what it takes. But what about Sergeant Anderson? Sometimes it's hard to remember how long I've been here. Those guys that made their escape, they must be back in the States by now eating steak and ice cream and sleeping in beds with clean white sheets. Well, this is hardly a place I'd choose for a vacation. It's not exactly a pleasure resort. The accommodations leave something to be desired in the way of comfort. The food is bad and there isn't much of it. About the only thing a man has plenty of in this place is time. Time to think of all the people you haven't seen for months or years. Time to think of all the things you might be doing if only you were somewhere else. Time to rot if you don't watch yourself. Time to remember the guys who had guts enough to break out of this place. And there were some who did. Fred Wilson was one. His plan was so simple that the guards are probably still trying to figure out what happened. He simply waited until a work gang had been formed and when the guards back was turned, he joined in with the other men. He chose a day when the work detail was heavier than normal. And since he was not assigned to this detail, his name was not on the list. He was careful to make his move after the roster had been checked, because he knew each man had to be accounted for. In that way, he was able to get outside the gates without being listed on the roster. Right. Here. 
Adams. Here. Kolosky. Here. Smith. Here. Abrams. Here. Green. Here. White. Here. Williams. Here. Addy. Here. Swede. It was customary for a roll call and a head count to be taken by the guards at the end of a day's work. When each man on the list was accounted for, they were ready to march the detail back to the PW compound for the night. Roar in. Boss Brooks. Since Wilson's name was not on the list, he was never missed. Then there were the surveyors. That's the name everybody remembers those three fellows by. They really had a lot of guts and even more imagination. Somehow they managed to get a hold of an engineer's tape, a sledge and some wooden stakes. With these they set to work measuring out a center line for a road. The guards assumed, of course, that they had been told to stake out the area because they knew that prisoners never did any more work than they had to. A fantastic plan, maybe, but it seemed to be going well while they were still inside the compound. Even the guards at the gate were taken in. There was one, however, who did seem a little suspicious. That was their most anxious moment. But by keeping their heads and not getting rattled, they were able to keep right on going. While they were sweating it out, the guards were joking about the prisoners asking them to work. But it was no joke to the guards later, when they began to realize what had really happened. these escapes had some repercussions. Yakut! Agbis, that is. Cigarette? Please. I hope you men find our camp reasonably comfortable. Yes? Is the complaint? We need more chow. Chow? What is this? Grub, eat, food. Oh, yes, of course. Your American expressions are so droll. Please make arrangements for more uh, chow. Any other complaints? Step forward, please. I need a new pair of shoes, sir. Oh, 
yes. I'm sure we can do something about that. His name, please. Yes? I think your men have been intercepting our Red Cross food packages, sir. Oh? I think you are mistaken. But I shall certainly look into the matter. Any other men? I need more straw for my mattress. Straw? How many men need more straw? It will be arranged. More straw for these men. Now, men, I want you to do me a little favor. As you know, recently, several of your men have escaped. That is not good. Not good for me, possibly not good for you. Such occurrences may suggest to my superiors that my discipline is too lax. In fact, they might even decide to replace me. We would not want that, would we? Now, all I want you men to do is to sign this paper giving me your word you will not attempt to escape. Come, come, step forward, please. You can't sign that. What is that? You can't sign that. It's a parole. And why can't he sign it? It's against our regulations. But you happen to be under our regulations now. That doesn't matter, sir. You can't force a man to do something that's against the regulations of his own country. Is that so? Not legally. Not according to the Geneva Convention. Oh, yes. The Geneva Convention. Very well. If that is how you choose to repay my kindness, we shall have to try other measures. These men who complain, you have their names? Yeah, Gruden. Place them in solitary confinement for seven days. The charge, insubordination. Oh, yes, and include the sergeant who quotes the Geneva Convention. As for the others, put them on bread and water for three days. It so happens, sergeant, we are not at Geneva. Perhaps it was the punishment, the cruelty and the rank injustice of it, which made me decide that I couldn't stay here any longer. I simply had to get out. All kinds of ideas were running through my mind. Then suddenly it clicked. That's it, a ladder. Then I thought the ladder we used would be black. But the ladder to be used as a decoy should be light colored. So the guards can spot it without any trouble. Yeah. Well, it's okay with the escape committee. Go ahead, Sarge. Thanks. Now, what we need is two short ladders and a plank. Say, I think I can get one ladder from the tool house. Okay, Tex. Smitty and I will dig up some boards and make the other one. See this? What is it? A key to the tool house. And there's a light colored ladder there. Tex, you're a wizard.
the ladder I can shove back to fall down so the guards can't tell where we go over the fence. But what are we going to do with that plank? I've got that figured. We'll tie a rope to the far end and pull it from the other side when we get out. Yeah, that'll get rid of it. That'll work fine. All right, Sarge, let's go over those points again. Well, we save up all the food we can. Once we're out, we travel by night, hide and rest during the day. That's right. Unless you get hold of civilian clothes, then you can travel by day, posing as natives. In that case, you'll need forged identification papers. We'll fix them up for you before you leave. Fine. And once across the border, we contact the American Consulate General. And don't forget, don't talk to anyone about the details of your escape. Save those for the Army attaché or the intelligence officers. Talking to unauthorized persons could hurt chances of escape for others. I've got you. Make sure you pass these things on to Tex and Smitty. What's the matter? Aren't you hungry? I'm saving up for a rainy day. Yeah? You won't have long to wait around here. That's what I figure. Now avoid this main road and this railroad. They're probably patrolled. You better go around the cities. They're too dangerous. Okay. And whatever you do, don't accept a lift from anybody. The only people with vehicles in this country are on official business. We'll remember. I guess that's all. Here are your papers. Thanks. Don't use them unless you have to. We won't. Remember, everything is set to start at 2,200 hours sharp. After that, you're on your own. Right. Good luck.
back yet. Where's Smitty? He's ready. Hope Jones doesn't have any trouble with that ladder. Jones? you guys let's have some noise hey no Well, what are we stopping for? A road. Well, let's get across. Can. It's too straight here. Get down. I see what you mean. Those lights would have picked us up sure as shooting. There's a curve down here. Come on. What's the matter? Shh. Do we have to cross those tracks? Yeah. We can make it if we crawl.
boy, I'm pushed. Oh, me too. Our dogs are killing me. Why don't we stop here for the day? Uh, too dangerous. They'll be searching along the streams. Okay, just let me get my face wet. Don't drink that water. We'll find a spring somewhere. Don't worry. You sure gave us a turn. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. You look just like a native. Here, put these on. Where'd you get them? Swiped them from the farm about a mile back. What happens if they catch us in these? You got your dog tags? Yeah, I got them. And you got nothing to worry about. You got identification to prove you're a soldier. Here, let's have a last look at this map. Which way we head? Southeast. That's this way. It's the general direction of this highway. Only we can't use the highway itself. We have to use the back roads and fields. Seems to me the river's our first objective. Yeah. And then we head for the mountains. Right. You got it memorized? Yeah. I can see it with my eyes closed. Hey, what are you doing? You guys are pretty touchy about maps that might show military information. We wouldn't want to be shot as spies, would we? Well, now that you mention it... That reminds me. Let's not go looking for trouble. We don't take any chances we don't have to take. Caution. That's our motto. We've only got one job ahead of us. And that's to get out of this country. Okay? Okay. Okay. One more thing, Tex. They don't chew gum around here. Huh? Oh. for the eyes. Good for the stomach, too. Look what I got. What are we going to do with them? These will give us an occupation. We can work on the roads. Tex, I think you got something there. And that way we can travel by day. just across that open field. The border and freedom. But even with freedom in sight, anything can happen. This isn't the time to be over anxious. Not now more than ever. Keep the odds in your favor. Wait for darkness and concealment. 
This is the moment every man taken prisoner hopes for. Freedom ahead for those who dare to make a try for it. Let's go! As a prisoner of war, a soldier is still a member of the Army fighting team. United States forces will make every effort to free him or to assist his escape. It is the duty of every soldier who has been captured to use the prisoner's most effective weapon, escape. Obey the orders of the senior military American present, commissioned or non-commissioned. Refuse to give more than name, rank, service number, and date of birth. Refuse to give parole. Refuse to cooperate for propaganda, broadcasts, signing of petitions, or other purposes inimical to the interests of the United States or of assistance to the enemy program. Live and act during his captivity so that there will be no doubt but that he held to his mission of fighting the enemy before and after capture. By planning and executing reasonable attempts to escape, the soldier may reach freedom. Even if his first attempts fail, they are never useless. Any well-planned escape or attempted escape requires the enemy to utilize additional troops both in guarding prisoners of war and in searching for those who have escaped. Escape can save you from years of prison misery. The escapes shown in this film are based on actual case histories taken from the files of the Department of the Army. Variations of the escape ideas shown here can be adapted to existing conditions and circumstances to ensure a successful escape. Treatment after capture will vary from sheer brutality to extreme leniency, depending upon the mood of the captors and the conditions time and place of capture. No attempt has been made in this film to depict the range of conditions that are likely to be encountered by the POW. A soldier is a fighting man, first and foremost, and remains so under all circumstances. If a soldier, despite his most valiant efforts, is captured, he never surrenders. He must continue to resist the enemy physically to the limit of his ability, and beyond that, he must continue to fight mentally. He is still a member of the United States Army. He is still bound by his duty and by the laws of his service and his country. He must give no more than his name, rank, service number, and date of birth. He must resist the enemy's questions and interrogations by every ruse and device he can contrive. He must defeat every plot of the enemy to break down his resistance. He must make every effort to escape. The duty of a United States soldier is unalterable, to fight and defeat the enemies of the United States of America, even though in so doing, he may have to give his life to keep faith with his country. <laughs>